And now we have finally made it to the end in which we will be capping this episode off with the one and only grand finale. And uh, we have just mentioned this, but uh, considering that uh, Mute Mayhem was one of your favorite movies last year, uh, are you excited for more Ninja Turtles, more so than just Mutant Mayhem? Um, well, so this story about the Ronin, the last Ronin, I couldn't be less excited. I am Ooh. so tired of every single franchise trying to become Logan. Like it was, it was refreshing for Logan. It was something new. It was something that, but literally every hero now we've gotten the narrative of becoming the, uh, the bitter, angry, resentful, you know, just kind of this dystopian, whatever on a, like the dark bloody version. I I'm so tired of it. You know, like they already had to do it to <laughs> to to Luke Skywalker. They already did, it, you know, and it, they they've done it to Picard on you know sometimes <laughs> it's on TV. But I, I just I'm just tired of it. It's it is I it's not interesting to me. Like they d- did it with Indiana Jones last year. I just I I am tired. Think of something else. Like it would be at this point, it would be refreshing to have one of the heroes of the past stay optimistic and. <laughs> Like, I mean, what are we going to get? Like the, the, you know, this new upcoming, uh, if we got to see, um, Tony Stark again, is he going to be like, is it going to be another Logan? I just, I am tired of it. I, so this has no, this is not for me. I'm not interested. Dang. This just got interesting. I gotta say, yeah. I didn't know you would start off right off the bat with a massive rant. But to give you context of what we are talking about, yes, it is actually going to be an R-rated, gritty, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Among all the announcements that Paramount has made, one of them, and one that has really caught a lot of people's attention, is going to be a live-action R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Specifically, it will be a film adaptation of the comic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the Last Ronin. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with The Last Ronin, why do I not have control of this webpage? Please give me control. Why is this frozen? Oh, fudge. Help me. It's, it's, okay, it's just my whole browser has suddenly decided to just freeze over. I don't know what the fridge am I doing. Okay, like, well, technically, <laughs> let's see. My internet is on. You're still alive and well. Why is this frozen? <laughs> What the fridge? Help me! I need I need my freaking... Hold on a sec. Here, I'm gonna go and open another window. Maybe that can help. G- give me give me a new window. Oh, shnut. I think Google Chrome just crashed on me. What the fridge? This ain't... This is, I didn't expect this kind of technical difficulty. What the fridge? What is going on? Okay, but anyways, um... Alright, I'm just gonna go... I'm gonna roll with it. I'm going to try to do my best to go and uh, try to summarize the whole situation. Okay, so with um, with Tina, with uh, The Last Ronin, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is often considered to be one of the darkest stories from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, basically, the whole plot line is that uh, it is said to be set in a total... A total... A total... Son of a fish. <laughs> no, I can't even... My my browser is not working. My, my, my talking is not working. What the fridge is working now? <laughs> Anyways, um, as I was saying... Okay, so it is set in a totatel... Totatel... What, what is the word? Totalarian? Totalarian? I think that's what, what it is. Anyways, a totalarian New York City with the turtle... Totali- to yeah, totalitarian. Total. Thank you. Totalitarian. Why the fridge is that so hard to say? Anyways, oh, it just crashed. Oh, great. Son of a fish. Okay, let me go and um, get that again. I'll go and um, try to resume. Uh, let me see if I could get that article so that it can. Uh, it can help me uh, 
get back into it. So, yeah, let me just go. Thank you. Okay, finally, it's back. Okay, thank you. So, anyways, now I can properly do it. And I'll go and um, read it from my source on the Hollywood Reporter. As it states... The last Ronin is about as terrifying as a turtle's tail can get. Set in a totalitarian future New York City, the comic miniseries told of how the turtles and Master Splinter are killed off one by one by the grandson of the villainous Shredder and synthetic ninjas. One turtle manages to survive barely and vows to exact bloody revenge. One trick of the book was that it wasn't clear, for a while at least, which one of the turtles lived, as the survivor had uh, the weapon of all four. As you could see, uh, as you could see in the cover with uh, the turtle, and has like all the weapons intact. Now, uh, by the way, just to go and give you some context in regards to the last Ronin, uh, recently, they actually released a sequel of that story called TMNT The Last Ronin 2 Re-Evolution, uh, which actually sold very successfully in terms of uh, pre-sales, where there were over uh, 140,000 copies that were ordered. And on top of that, for the movie itself, we don't necessarily have any announcements in terms of a release date or who's going to be involved and stuff like that, but they did state that apparently... Uh, the writer for the upcoming Boy Kills World action movie uh, by the name of Tyler Burton Smith, he is going to be penning this script. Okay, oh boy, I don't know why that was such a struggle to just get through with just saying tot uh, totalitarian. Totalitarianism. And, uh, yeah, to say that, and especially my browser suddenly just having a brain fart. I don't know why that was hard, but okay, I, at least I managed to get through that. So, yes. So, wh when you first heard about this, you were not excited? No. Oh, wow. I audibly groaned when I first heard about it. and Just because I just feel like we have been... Just every franchise has to have their, their version of Logan, and I'm just bored. It's not interesting to me. It It's... I don't know. I'm just tired of it. Like, at this point, like tell a different story like tell something like i don't know i just feel like we keep getting in the same movie over and over slash show over and over again and uh like not every single person grows up to be bitter and resentful and uh and you know out for revenge like so what what is it just out of curiosity that bothers you? Is it just the plot line of the uh, of the grit, you know, this gritty turtle story with many yeah, with I many just, of the I'm main bored. I I just feel like every franchise has had their entry now of like we're trying to make the next Logan, and it's not interesting to me. Okay, but um, just out of curiosity, like if it's not that plot line, would you still be down for an R-rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? Yeah, that could be fine. I have no problem with that. Uh, but, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, alright, so it's just mainly the plot line and going with the story with the last Ronin. That's what turns you off and stuff like that. Yeah, I just feel like we have gotten so many different in in uh iterations of that basic story and uh i think it's boring uh okay okay that that is interesting because i will i will admit when i first heard about it like it did caught my interest because with teenage mutant ninja turtles it feels like with th with this story in particular it feels like it is kind of going back to their roots uh like specifically with the indie comics that they would get super violent. A lot of people would forget yeah, that. That's like, fair. Yeah, like a lot of people would forget that in the original comics, um, like they, like they were geared towards adult. They would be uh, adults. They would be unapologetically violent with what they would do. It wasn't until when the Saturday morning cartoon sh cartoon show came in where they had to really like make it kid friendly. That's where like. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that many people are familiar with, that's how it ultimately came to be. But considering that now that, like, with Mutant Mayhem, they're, like, 
slowly but surely we we see the turtles getting back into their or their comic origins with the uh and the aesthetic of the animation looking like an underground comic and april o'neill being african-american now with this one like okay i could see where like we could get back into the turtles being like ultra violent being unapologetically gory and whenever they would slash people yeah it would get very bloody at times so that i will say like it does intrigue me but i never thought about how like you would get this you know that th this is becoming a trope that you know we're like with these r-rated uh gritty reboots and stuff because like technically like yeah it is becoming more of a thing like we not just with logan but debatably also with um joker as well being this r you know being another yeah. like r-rated uh comic book movie and i guess with the turtles like i mean even batman v superman had some of those ideas of like sort of the more bitter older batman uh the uh and kind of out to you know out to avenge what had happened and i mean i don't know i just like you said they did it with uh, they did it with Star Trek and Picard. They did it with, mm -hmm. um, they did it with certainly with Luke. Uh, and it's just like, let's just think of a different idea. Yeah. What would, just out of curio curiosity, like, I, like, what would be your idea if you, if, if, if um, Paramount really wants to make an R rated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie that would also be live action? What would be another idea that you would recommend? I mean, it's easy to sort of say, well, they could go the Deadpool route and be like really uh, vulgar and sarcastic and funny, you know, try like that route. But that's also been kind of done to death. So uh, <laughs> um, I guess I would be more inclined to have it be like an older team up of the like of the uh turtles and uh that uh and something like that a team up movie like um, do you I mean be... do you mean like one of those like get the band back together yeah, type stories yeah, yeah yeah i think i would be more inclined to that i don't know if that's just you know spitballing off the top of my head like i feel like that would be more interesting to me than this but i don't know i'd have to think about it <laughs> yeah i know like admittedly i did put you a little bit on the spot right there uh but um honestly like it, it's it's tough like for me i feel like if there would be another idea it would be tough to figure out like okay well you're doing like a live action movie and i get like the argument of like well this is technically like a you know a film adaptation of a popular tmnt comic but honestly, like for me, I would feel like, why would we need a P you know, why would we need like, why, why would we have to make it live action? Like, why don't we just go back? Like, how about we just go back to like mute mayhem and somehow make that R rated like that? Like it would be like taking a big risk, like what Joker for the Ender would do, but it, it would be interesting or, yeah. or another idea I would have in mind, what would work is if they would make if they really are inclined to make a live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, why not make a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles four? You know, bring back that nostalgic out uh, uh, that that nostalgia yeah. aspect where you would go back and be something I more see that. yeah be more reminiscent to the early nineteen nineties movie, but have it be R rated. That could honestly, I feel like mm -hmm. that one would actually be interesting and i could see that really work like to really not just um uh, you know not just to, to get the tmnt crowd but specifically to get the you know the fans of those original movies and even maybe bring back you know maybe go a little bit more practical and reunite with uh, the jim henson company in order to do mm -hmm. some of the effects and do some of the costumes yeah that could be or you could do like a It'd be fun if there if there was like a crossover. I know there was that animated Batman and Ninja Turtles movie. Yeah, um, and that could be like a fun um, way to sort of breathe new light into it, is to cross over with another franchise. 
TMNT meets <laughs> Fast and the Furious. I, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, like, keep in mind, it is from Paramount. So, I mean, <laughs> and especially if they're going to go R-rated, their options are limited. But, I mean, yeah, like, they're already they're... do you know, they're already doing a crossover with G.I. Joe and Transformers. Like I could imagine that could that could was also really TMNT work. and Mission Impossible. <laughs> oh, well, I was thinking TMNT and Transformers, but uh, yeah. uh, but that could. Which, it was a little surprising that they didn't talk about trans. I mean, I mean, they didn't talk about Mission Impossible at all. Oh, that is true. Well, then again, I guess like that's still like on hold because like they still need need a lot more time in order to make that movie. Like the, the 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 next one is not going to be coming out until like what twenty twenty six. They don't I have any of it shot. I thought they shot some of the stuff at the same time, congruent. They could. I I don't know, but like I like they're probably asking for more time for the production. Uh, well, okay. Some people, yeah. Some people are saying it's still planning for twenty twenty five, or that the strike really hit it badly. That that could be the case. Hmm. I was surprised they didn't mention it. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. The, like they, but I mean, they. D there is no shortage of announcements that they have done, anyways. Uh, but probably another time they'll go and make a, a reveal out of it. So, uh, safe to say, though, well, I, I'm not gonna lie. I saved this for last. I thought you would be hyped up considering your love for uh, mute mayhem, but yeah. I was shocked to come in and see that, like, <laughs> you just come in saying that I hate this. This is going to suck. I'm tired of this crap. But, yes. But wow. Okay. So I was not expecting it at all. But yeah. So. Well, what I, do you think? Are you excited? I am curious to see what they have in store. Like, honestly, I want to I want to see, like, maybe with what they would do. If it's going to be like in the veins of like what the of what those Michael Bay produced films are. Uh, I don't know. Like, if it's going to be too CG yeah. heavy, I wouldn't be in. I, I don't know. I don't think I would be into <laughs> it. But, you know, I'm curious to see how they would take something like TMNT and bring it into the R rated world. Like, uh, the grittiness and like the grittiness and stuff like that. I guess that can be debatable because, yeah, like the gritty, you know, the gritty nature, like it's been way too overdone. And I think it's safe to say Zack Snyder has officially killed that mood. But um, <laughs> honestly, I'm more in a wait and see kind kind of attitude fair enough all right <laughs> call me the they're calling me the hot blood habanero hot blood habanero tendencies girl <laughs> <laughs> uh but hey i mean hey trust me i think this whole segment here is a massive highlight safe yeah, to say okay. we just made we just made something crazy <laughs> here and this is what this podcast is all about <laughs> are you not entertained exactly oh i'm sure they're way they're definitely entertained <laughs> hey if my difficulties of saying totalitarianism <laughs> is not enough then i don't know what the fridge is <laughs> but anyways now i would like to know your thoughts folks what did you all think about the announcement of the last Ronin movie? Uh, are you more optimistic? Are you more hyped up about it? Or do you agree with Rachel that it is just not necessary? Let me know what you all think on that. Uh, let's see now. Uh, personally, while I'm not familiar with the last Ronin story, this seems like it has a lot of potential, especially with how it's going towards an extremely dark direction more than ever before. Uh, also, uh, this is not only an adaptation of the last Ronin in development, THQ Nordique will be making a video game based on the story. Okay. I mean, it would definitely work as a video game. Uh, I gotta give it that. Uh, let's see what else. Um... This, to me, feels like the biggest surprise to come out from CinemaCon, and I would definitely be down to see an R-rated live-action TMNT movie that the franchise never went to before. It has the potential to be great, along with having the Boy Kills World director being attached to make it, which I heard good things about it. Live-action TMNT, I know, are a mixed bag, including the Michael Bay-produced films, but with the right team that the articles mentioned, then it might be good. So I wish them luck. All right. 
I don't have uh, I don't have any especially strong thoughts about this one. Just hoping it's better than the Turtles Christmas special with those freaky <laughs> costumes. <laughs> uh, however, on a related note and positive note is that Paramount's multi-year deal with Jeff Rowe, who will be overseeing all the animated live action projects, uh, he's definitely someone who will be running big business productions, especially how he prioritizes the well-being of the whole team behind Mutant Mayhem. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, I have a lot of respect for Jeff Rowe. Like, not only very talented with what he has shown with uh, Mutant Mayhem, but the treatment that he has given to uh, his animators, to the cast, and all of that stuff, it's very admirable. Like, honestly, someone to look for, uh, look up to. Yeah, and he was... He was uh involved with um mitchell's first machines which mm -hmm. i love yeah probably probably so took much. probably took note about what happened during the production of mitchell's versus the machines that say okay let's not do that <laughs> uh but anyways um this definitely has my interest. I have actually read the last no, uh, the last Ronin myself and was amazed by how it went back to its underground roots. Uh, if it gets the right people, we could uh we could be in for the best Ninja Turtles movie yet. All right. Um, if the Nickelodeon movies logo shows up for this R-rated Ninja Turtles movie, then we are living in a beautiful timeline where TMNT is getting an R-rated film. Uh, but we'll wait and see on this going to, uh, if it's going to work. Oh my god, yeah, if it, oh my god, if this is a Nick, if this counts as a Nickelodeon movie, I'd be freaking amazed. Oh my god, Nickelodeon going in for the hard R direction. <laughs> Uh, let's see now. What else? Uh, what other comments would there be? I may not be a huge TMNT fan, and safe to say I'm kind of over the gritty style, so I'm a little nervous about this. Uh, I've never read the comic, uh, so it could work, but I am not sure. But then again, the TMNT were in t uh, initially aimed at adults. Uh, I hope this will go better than the Michael Bay movie or that Christmas movie. Does anybody remember that? Oh yeah, I'm sure people have remembered <laughs> for sure. And yeah. I'll just read uh, one more comment here. I'm looking forward to seeing this. It was, uh, if it was any, if it's anything like Logan, oh, it's anything, it was anything like Logan, but it was more like the Michael Bay movies and I will hate it. Also, do you know that TMNT is the last Ronin, actually a parody of the Frank Miller, uh, Frank Miller Ronin. Also hoping this is more of an 18A, 18, 18 a company than an R restricted rating, uh, to use your Canadian movie ratings as an example. 